Hey everybody, it's Ali Edwards and I am back with you today as part of our story play series. This week we are focusing on the concept of facts and feelings as a tool for journaling, as a tool for getting more, getting a more complete story told. Today we are going to focus on something that I think is a great way to excavate uh, both facts and feelings, which is by looking to our photos as the jumping off point. One of the things that I've learned over years and years and years now of doing this is that one of the most beautiful things about our photos is that they hold layers of stories. There is always a top layer, which is often the facts, right? You can look at a picture and you can say, this is the color carpet, this is the location, this is the time. Th these are the things that were happening, right? Going back to that who, what, where, when, right? Those are the things that you can see on the top level. And then below that, there are additional levels of story that often get to the why. Why is it important to you? Why were you doing a certain activity? Why, you know, just answering that question, why? So today we're gonna talk a little bit, I wanna show you some examples of a couple of photos that I um, picked out, and then we're gonna identify, or I am going to identify for you some of the facts and feelings. And what I ended up doing this time is actually actually used that uh, the feelings list that I mentioned in yesterday's video or the previous video depending on when you're watching this uh, there was a link there's a link on the blog post for that and I used this to help me identify maybe some feelings that are different from my go-to ones that I go to again and again we'll talk a little bit about that when we get there so the whole concept of layers of stories when we did story camp here a number of years ago and I was putting together some of the presentations for that. This is one of the things that really stuck out to me as such a beautiful opportunity for all of us in memory keeping to look at our photos and attempt to look deeper into our photos and think about the different stories that each one of our photos could tell. And so that's what I'm gonna talk a little bit about today. So this, the whole concept here is using your photos to pull out the facts and the feelings. When we talked about this yesterday, I was talking more about, oh, you think of, uh, or the invitation yesterday, right, was to name three facts and three feelings about right now. And when I do that kind of journaling, I'm mainly just sitting here, I'm not necessarily necessarily using a photo as a jumping off point. I'm just sitting and I'm thinking, okay, what are three facts about my life right now? And what are three feelings, you know, three ways I feel about what's happening in my life or three just general feelings about things that are happening in my life. So that's one way that you can approach facts and feelings journaling. Another way is by using photos as the jumping off point and you use those photos, you use your photos to literally excavate and pull out both the facts and the feelings that are going to be in the story layers of those photos. Okay, I'd like to read you this section from this book called The Emotional Lives of Teenagers. This is by author Lisa Demur. She has another book that I really, really liked called Untangled, which is about um, teen and tween girls. Both of these are great books if you are in this season of life, even if you have already experienced part of life with some teens and you have some other ones coming up. I've found lots of good wisdom in this book. And she has a section where she's talking about why talking about feelings works. And I thought that as I as I listened, I actually listened to this book first and then I ordered the hard copy so that I could underline things. Um, I, I wanted to share this with you guys as we are talking about this topic because um, I think it's really interesting. And um, I think that it is a little nugget that you can put in your pocket and just kind of decide what do you think about it? What do you think about what she is saying related to this? So she says, we take it as a given that putting feelings into words brings emotional relief. Conventional wisdom and personal experience tell us that getting something off our chest or venting or talking about what's really going on helps us feel better. And I, what I'm doing here is I'm extrapolating a little bit and I'm taking the talking about feelings and I'm aligning that with writing about feelings. So keep that in mind. But if you think about it, we should stand back in wonder at the fact that simply describing an uncomfortable psychological state sometimes makes that easier to bear. 
Through my, though my entire career as a clinical psychologist rests on the assumption that finding words for emotions eases suffering, I've never quite gotten over the magic of this phenomenon. And then she talks about some theories related to why that is true, why talking about your feelings and or, again, my own extrapolation, writing about feelings, why that's true. One of the ones I thought was most interesting that she includes in here, she said, in one study, research participants looked at an upset at upsetting photographs of natural disasters, gruesome accidents, or people in obvious agony. So they're looking at the photographs of these. Then some of them were instructed to talk about their own emotional responses to the images, while others were told to simply state facts about the picture. So some people were told to talk about their feelings when they look at those pictures, and other people were told to just state the facts. Um, as the subject either as the subjects either shared their personal feelings or presented objective facts, electrodes measured their emotional arousal via the electrical activity of their skin. Data from the electrodes showed that talking about the feelings brought on by the images had a calming effect, but describing the facts did not. I just thought that was interesting, and I wanted to share it because what I am advocating here during this whole week is that the beauty comes from the combination of both, right? The combination of the facts and the feelings. I want to have both in my memory keeping because I do want to have the facts. When I look at my parents' um, photo albums that lack a lot of words, uh, they're mainly the pictures, I, I want both. I want to know the facts. I want to know where it was. I want to know who the people in the pictures are. I want to know, uh, you know, what the setting was. And then I also want to know how they were feeling about it. What, what, how was my mom feeling in that season of life? Or how was my grandmother feeling in that season of life? Like I want to have both of those things, but I thought it was really fascinating and want to just, you know, put an exclamation point on the fact that data from the electrodes showed that talking about feelings brought on by the images had a calming effect, uh, but describing the facts did not. So again, they're talking about saying it out loud, but I can't help but imagine that it would be the same for writing. So if you are just writing the facts, you are not getting the same calming effect as you would if you were including the feeling so that there is potentially actually a physiological impact that can come from expressing them verbally and I'm guessing from expressing them in the written word as well. So super interesting book. Obviously, it's about raising teenagers. uh, But that, as I was listening, that absolutely (laughs) stuck out to me as something that I wanted uh, to bring up and share with you guys during this week. All right, the next thing that I want to do is I want to actually excavate some facts and feelings from photos. So I want to take you through what I did. I picked out three photos. One's from my childhood, one is a recent picture, and one is from a few years ago. And talk about the facts and the feelings that I am pulling out from those photos as I look at them. All right, so here is a photo of me and my brother John and my sister Jessica. And the fact, one of the facts of this, and I'm going to go through just in kind of bullet pointed like we talked about yesterday, where you're doing one fact, one feeling, one fact, one feeling. So the fact, this is in Coos Bay, Oregon, it's around 1979, 1980, I think in that time period, right before we moved into a different house feeling. So when I sit here, I can easily, the facts are easily identifiable, right? The feeling for me can come in a variety of different forms. Um, One of the feeling might be a feeling of nostalgia, right? Because this is looking back at an old picture. Um, I'm usually, when I'm looking back at these childhood photos, I'm usually awash in feelings, right? A variety of different feelings because I'm bombarded by all of these different stories, layers of stories that are actually embedded in this particular photo from this time in my life, but then also all the time between this photo and my life right now, right? Like there's a lot of feeling that comes in because this is my life and this is the, you know, all these experiences that I've had. So as I was looking at this, what I decided to do is I pulled out the um, that feelings list and I looked at the photo and and then I looked at the feelings list and I tried to pick something other than, um, you know, a go to, which is usually gratitude or thankfulness. But I think you're going to see that here because I think that this first one is appreciation. But that's a different word than I normally use. And I and I I appreciate um, 
the fact that, you know, having a list like this helps me or is is encouraging me to think about maybe some different words or different identification of feelings. So the feeling that I said is I love seeing this kind of photo when I was a kid, when I was a kid. So if I wanted to tell, you know, make this into a scrapbook page right now, I could have the fact, here's the fact of, of what's happening in this photo. Um, a part of the story that I want to tell here is I just simply am, am really appreciative and thankful that I have the opportunity to see, uh, you know, these kinds of photos from when I was a kid. So kind of appreciate right to my parents that they took photos um, appreciation of history I feel that as well another fact would be that I'm the oldest of three so I'm the I'm the the oldest sibling to my my brother and sister and then when I looked at for another feeling a word that I identified on the feelings list was tender um, and I said for the years that have passed for the people we were and the people we are for the things that were good and the things that were hard for family. And one of the things that you might notice in that is that is that journaling right there, that feeling expression is not specific necessarily, right? I'm not I'm not necessarily identifying a feeling of the specific moment in time because I don't remember this actual moment in time, right? For me it's more of a it's a season, right? And, and uh, uh, I don't actually remember living in that house. Well, maybe I do. I, I remember a few things um, of living in this particular house, but it's hard for me to, um, to find those feelings because they're so far away. So the tenderness that I feel and the way that I wrote right there is tenderness t- to history, right? Tenderness to the the to to the growth and to the relationships and um there are many 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 stories that i could tell from this particular picture and i wanted to identify some of that as well so that the exercise that i just took you through is is can be so simple right i think that often we make journaling so much harder uh because we think that it's supposed to sound a certain way or it's supposed to look a certain way or um we're supposed to tell a long story or we're supposed to be able to remember uh, rather than just having taking these photos and using them as an opportunity to look for different stories that might be in the layers of the photo. So let's talk about a few other stories I could tell. I could tell a story about how I felt being the oldest of three, right? That was the fact that I um, shared in, in the in the last slide there. How do, I, how do I feel now about being the oldest of three? What has it been like to be the oldest and how does that impact, um, you know, who I am today and my personality and those sorts of things? Like that's a story that I could tell using this picture as a jumping off point. Um, and that would be a lot of feelings, right? Because it's, it's me, it's how I feel about being the oldest and about how I feel of my story related to that. Another story that could be told using this photo would be playing outside was one of our favorite things to do. That's a fact, uh, but it's also, there's a lot of feeling in that, right? We we played a lot with each other. We're close in age. My brother and I are about 15 months apart. My sister, I'm about four years older than my sister, but we're all right in there in terms of, you know, being playmates and, and friends with each other growing up. Um, another story I could tell is I could collect memories of this particular house. For me, that would probably be, you know, that would be an excavation of, of trying to remember back. There's a few specific stories that stick out to me. There's, and some of them are like, I spilled um, split pea soup on my arm when I was around this age, like really hot soup and and was burned from that, not in a, not something that lasted, but it's something that I remember because it was such an intense experience. So I remember more of those kinds of things than I do the everyday rhythm of of life at that point at this point in time and i think that that's one of those things that like i have mentioned already i think in this series it's one of those things that um influences the stories that i choose to tell today you know focus on on everyday life storytelling another story that i could tell from this picture as i excavate layers of of different stories is just how lucky and thankful i am to have some of these childhood photos and um that is a story that I have told already, but it's a story that I could tell again because I'm in a different season of life, right? And some of the things that even if I was telling a story about that five years ago, my story today is going to be influenced by the way I feel today, uh, not just you know however I felt how however I felt five years ago. So 
layers of stories, like let let them come out. And this isn't just for old photos, right? Old photos definitely have um, lots of layers of stories and lots of stories that could be told from them. But we can also do this with very recent photos. This is a, from a photo earlier this week. Let's go through the fact feeling and fact feeling. So the first one is a fact. This is my dog, Betty. She's in my closet. This is in late September. She's about one and a half years old. Uh, what are my feelings about this particular picture? Um, one that I grabbed off of this list, again, I'm literally looking at this list as I'm trying to identify what is my feeling because I'm working on trying to uh, get clearer or be clearer about what my actual feelings are. Uh, affectionate, which I thought was a great word. Uh, I, when I look at this, I'm just, I love this dog so much. This is, she's such a great dog. I'm really lucky to get to have her. She has such a huge personality. Um, so I, I feel a lot of love and, and affection towards her. She's my buddy. Uh, so I can talk about that. Another fact is if I go into my closet, she will immediately jump on this bench and she'll use her nose to push up the blinds. And then I usually open the window for her and, and then she'll just sit there. She sits there calmly, quietly, and looks out the window while I put my clothes away. So that's a fact about that experience, right? And then another feeling as I looked on my list, try to pull out, this is the process of excavation, not only within the photo, but within how I feel about it. How do I feel about it? When I, how do I feel about the situation or how do I feel when I look at this photo? I feel delighted. I love that she does this. I think it's such a part of her personality. She's super chill. Um, and I really like getting to know her as she gets older and the things that, you know, her, her quirks and, and her personality. Uh, I'm just delighted. She delights me. So that's that's part of the story that I could tell here. Let's look at some more stories. If I'm going to excavate a little bit more, what are other stories that I could tell with this particular picture? I could tell a story about how she fills up pieces of my life. I could tell a story about um, how I have these dresses in my closet that I barely ever wear anymore and how that is a representative of changing seasons and different chapters in my own life. Um, I could tell a story about putting away the laundry and what our laundry routine is and what laundry do I do and what laundry do I not do and that could be be a whole story that could come out of this particular photo. I could also tell a story about just the storage in my house, right? That's kind of fact-based, right? Here, here's the kind of storage that we have in this house. Here's where things are stored or not stored. Um, and then how I feel about that, right? Do I, do I feel like it's enough? Do I feel like we have too much stuff? Do I feel like, um, <laughs> these are all the things, do I feel like I need more breathing room to, and have less stuff? Those sorts of things could all be told of the, you know, from this one picture. All right, here is another one. This is a photo from 2018. It is the girls, Anna and Audrey, in their shared bedroom playing Legos. That's the fact, right? That's the surface layer fact of this particular photo. One thing I wanted to say real quick is that as you will see in the projects that I'm gonna put together in the next two videos, they are going to use journaling cards and prompt-based pages that are very similar to this in terms of it's already listed on there for you. Enter a fact, enter a feeling, enter a fact, enter a feeling. That's already set up. So you can use it in that very direct way, or you can do this first as a way to excavate the different pieces of the story that you want to tell, and then you can combine the facts and feelings together into a paragraph or you know some other form of journaling if you want to do that. So I just wanted to make sure I said that uh, out loud. So fact again, shared bedroom. What are my feelings? I looked to my sheet. How do I actually feel when I look at this picture? Uh, so that's one thing, I, uh, another thing I wanna say too is that, that, that part of the layers of the stories in the photos are like, there is a feeling that we get when we look at the picture itself, right? And oftentimes if it's in the past, it's probably going to be some sort of a reflection, right? It'll be reflective. But then there is also the feeling of in the moment when we were living in this moment. And sometimes those feelings can be harder to identify depending on what the picture is. But that is an opportunity, and I wanna just make sure that I say that out loud, that it's not just, you know, the when you look at the picture, what's the feeling that you get when you look at the picture, but it's also an opportunity to connect with the feeling that you had when the photo was taken. What's, what, what made you wanna take this photo in the first place? What sparked this photo for you? And how can you bring that out in the words that you use as you tell the story of this particular um, event or you know, uh, a moment in time? 
So the feeling, the feeling word that I grabbed off the list was reflective, right? Looking back at a season of my life where Legos were king and when the girls shared a bedroom. So I talk a lot about chapters and seasons because that's how I that's how I see my life. And so this was a particular chapter that we're not in this chapter anymore. We're not in this season anymore. Uh, many of the Legos have either been stored or shared. Uh, the girls now have their own rooms. They are high schoolers. Uh, so I definitely feel reflective uh, when I look back on that. I also, another fact here is that it's a mess, but it's our mess. Legos can be really messy, but they're also, they bring so much joy, right? That can be a feeling uh, related to that. But the other feeling that I picked out was um, interested. And that was a word that I saw on here. And we, as storytellers, get to choose what stories we want to tell based on these pictures. So one of the things that I identified, a feeling that I felt inside myself was that I was really interested in this the top-down photo. And I really like that angle and that view and that is good data and a good reminder to me to take top-down photos because I really like what how that looks, right? People engaged in other things. In this season of life, they spend a lot of time on the floor. They're played on their floor. Um, I also love that this photo includes technology, which is ever-present now. Um, and I also like knowing that they were recording themselves. I can see that Audrey is like clicking the record button on her phone. So they were probably recording themselves in play or they were making a commercial or they were doing something. And I love being able to pick out little pieces of what was real at that season in time and be able to use that uh, to support the story that I'm telling. Okay, more stories that could be excavated from this particular photo. Number one, just talking about the relationship between Audrey and Anna, what are facts and feelings about that. Um, I could dive into the just the history of Legos in our house, right? And where um, where are they and how many did we have? And, you know, I've told lots of stories about Simon and Legos because that was one of his big, big passions, which he still loves them. Um, I could tell the story of the green iPad. There's that little, it looks like an alien green iPad carrier that came uh, to this house when, when Aaron and his kids moved in. And it's just such a... It's a really good representation of Aaron. Like it looks look, just to me that is Aaron. And I know that significantly deeper now than I did when when he first moved in too. Um, another story that I could tell is the story of how they like to build com build with Legos compared to how Simon, my other son, likes to build with Legos. That's a story that I could tell. I could pair this photo with um, you know a photo of Simon, and then I could detail the facts and the feelings uh, related to those two photos. And then another story that could be told here is just how Audrey and Anna feel about being blended sisters. Or I could invite them. I could ask them, what do you remember about this season of your life? What were the things that you remember being into? What were, um, how did you feel about, you know, sharing a room with each other? How did you feel about Legos? How did you feel about technology? So many invitations to tell more of the story by using facts and feelings as the template or the formula that uh, tells a more complete story. One of the other things that I love about this, and this actually came about, I had a conversation, a podcast recording um, with a woman named Rebecca and for a podcast that will be coming out later in the year. And as we were talking, she was interviewing me about um, scrapbooking and leadership and, and just kind of pieces of my story about that. And she reflected back to me through that conversation that what a lot of what I do in memory keeping is connecting my inside with my outside. And she said that, and I was like, yes. And I said, yes, because that also is facts and feelings, right? The outside is often the facts. And I spelled outside wrong here. I, I think you guys will forgive me for that. Um, connecting our inside and outside, right? The outside is our facts, and the inside are the feelings. And so when we tell stories using facts and feelings, we're connecting both of those things together to create a sense of synergy, right? that tells a more complete story because we have both of those things uh, together. And, and again, I want to reiterate, having feelings doesn't mean that you are spilling everything out of all of the um, internal turmoil that we can all feel, right? We all have storms in our insides and we all have 
peace and ease in other moments on our insides. And I think it's it's finding that balance between um, full expression of the feelings, which might serve yourself, serve uh, your own personal needs really well in like a personal journal, uh, but then figuring out how which which of those feelings to excavate, which of those feelings to bring out and add into the stories that you're telling and the stories that you want to tell. So by including both facts and feelings, we are aligning our inside and our outside experiences to tell a more complete story. And I think that that's really where the beauty lies. And that's one of the things that I really hope that you guys take away from this, uh, this series, uh, this, this story play series. So next up, we're going to have two videos over the next couple of days, or just two videos. If you're watching this at another point in time, where I am sharing some projects, putting together projects using the, uh, facts and feelings story play kit so that you can see what does this actually look like in practice. So taking some of the tips and ideas that I've shared in the last few videos and um, actually applying them into some scrapbooking. So that's coming up, coming up next.